I've got a story to you, for you today about space. Now, Ooh. yeah, it's a little bit topical because we are sending, I say we, um, we, the US are sending some people into space later on uh, today. Not, no, we're not sending with Sci Guys Patreon. Today? Money. Today, hold yeah, on. I'm pretty sure it's today, is it not? What? Yeah, I think it's today. How is that not big? It, space has become so normal that it's not exciting anymore. And I want it to be on telly. I want to like, it have, is. Well, it's today on BBC One, some people are going to space. That's well, very interesting. It will be on telly, you, but okay. it's not like being bigged up, you know? No, okay. Here's, yeah. if you want to know whenever someone's going to space or whenever something space is happening, space is happening. Space like You is can happen- see the International happen- Space Station or whatever. Um, follow Matt Gray on Twitter. That's how I know, because Matt is on top of that. They are sending four astronauts to uh, the space station. Oh, the space. That's not exciting. That's not real space. I thought you meant somewhere interesting. No. It's the equivalent of like dipping oh, your no, toe like, in space. Isn't yeah, it? well, it's still space. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. maybe it's not space for America. I don't know. Um, because as we know, space for America is different than space for everyone else. You can <laughs> <laughs> check out our old episodes to find out why. Uh, but yeah, no, we're, <laughs> we're sending some people to space. So I thought I'd do perhaps a story on space so please space as we know is a dangerous place because mm. lots of th- everything will kill you in space it will yes more nothing often, more will often, kill you more often, more often than not you know space is dangerous but it potentially just got a little bit safer which is a lovely thing um, a lovely thing to find out so there was a study in germany that uh came up with guidelines for cpr in microgravity what? Mm. Yeah, right, so when I first read this, I was a little bit confused because I was like, CPR and microgravity. I was like, why would CPR be different? And then I remembered that uh, y- you kind of need gravity for CPR. The when you're doing compression, you're relying on yeah, gravity. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, you need, you need a ground for them to be stuck to. Yes. Which is, I really, uh, this is the thing. I forgot about how many things you know, need gravity, like pens, mm. um, you know, water. It's very difficult to drink. It's much more difficult to drink water if you don't have yeah. gravity, you know, kind of holding it in a bottle for you. <laughs> Luckily, you've actually got um, something in your body called peristalsis, which pushes- Yeah, it's um, so weird. Basically, ah. this, is, this is a slight off topic, but one, but it's great. So what happens is you've got a, a squeezing motion um, behind the food or whatever in your sort of, um, in your uh, throat, what's the word, gullet, I guess. Uh, you've got a squeezing motion behind it and a relaxing motion in front of it, which kind of just pushes food and other things down your throat. So luckily, we don't need gravity too much when it comes to eating and drinking. Otherwise, I doubt we'd be in space as often as we are. But um, no, so a lot of things need gravity. Uh, you know, like I said, pens, drinking water, but also CPR, obviously, because it's very useful for people to be stuck to the ground for many things. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so luckily, so far, no one has had a, had a heart attack in space. You know, that's good. Touch wood. Touch wood. I don't there want... is there is a first time for everything. Yes, and well, that's yeah. the thing with the number of people that we are sending to space nowadays. It's bound to happen at some point, especially considering that soon enough, it won't just be heavily, heavily vetted astronauts that are being like you know mm. shot up mm-hmm. into the stars. When we start sending people to Mars and start sending people to other place, the moon. Start that's sending, another place yeah. that's in space. If you want to know, <laughs> if you want to know other places in is space, is the moon in space? Yes. Yeah, as in, as it classes <laughs> space, or as it classes the moon. It, what I mean is, like, Earth isn't space. Earth becomes space after a certain barrier. No, but Earth is in space, right? Okay, sure, if you I were writing your post, if you were like there's... sending a letter to someone, yeah. if you were on Mars and you were sending a letter to someone, right, yes. on Earth, you would yes. put like you know, uh, James address postcode, yes, country space. Earth space. No, no. Well, well everyone is in space, though. I don't agree. Everyone's in space. Yeah, but you know, everyone in the UK is in the UK. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. Yeah. To be fair, we do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I get your okay. point. I, I'm, I regret asking my question now. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, all of these things are in space. And because we're sending more people there, we've got more chances for heart attacks because we've got more hearts in space. Mm. Inside the people, not, you know, on their own. So, um... This, someone named, I'm going to butcher this name, so you'll have to bear with me. Uh, Jochen Hinkelbein mm. um, led a study uh, in which, you know, uh, which happened in Germany, uh, hence the German type name, mm. um, in which he and his colleagues looked at the results of 88 papers on the subject. And all of these papers on CPR and microgravity used simulated microgravity, which I think is really, really cool. So, actually, what are some ways you think you can simulate microgravity? Um, Water. Water, that is one that they used. Water? Yeah. Because, okay, yeah. so water, if you think about it, when you're in water, you float because yeah. you've got the, you've got the sort of, cat, the buoyancy sort of force. Up thrust. Yeah. yeah, the up thrust in water, oh, which kind of yeah. cancels out a little bit your own weight. I guess so. Yeah, which is kind of like microgravity. Obviously there are, um, there was, are drawbacks to that. Oh uh, yeah. 
because, centrifuge. Well, they didn't I was use thinking that. of the because they send people in training. They send people up in a plane, don't they? And they go yep. up and down. Yeah, and that kind of simulates the, the so, microgravity. Yeah. So that's planes and parabolic arcs. And what happens with those is basically when you go into free fall, which is actually mm -hmm. what's happening with the ISS right now. When you go into free fall um, inside of a plane, you just mm -hmm. kind of start floating. Mm. And that's basically what's happening. When, when you're in orbit, what is happening is you're essentially in free fall, but gravity is kind of catching you and swinging you around. So you're constantly like in free fall, but kind of missing the earth. If you, that's, what, right. that's, what, that's what being in orbit is, it's kind of like, Yeah. you know? So we're in free fall around the sun, but we're just, we're just kind of missing. We're missing it. We're going right. Like slinging towards it, but then we, oh, we just miss it. And yeah, we it's come like, back you know, around. gravity is just pulling us in. So that's that's basically what's happening there. So when you're in free fall, you got, you got microgravity. That's why you've got microgravity on the space station. So that's two ways. There is also another way. They just used um, suspension systems. But from those 88 papers, what they did was come up with three main recommended methods for performing CPR in space. So I'm going to tell them to you now, just in case, at some point soon, you're in space. You're in space. And you need to save a life. Mm. So... Could happen um, to any one of you. Pay attention. <gasps> this is yeah. your training. Oh my lord! What if this? What if this saves someone's life? This could potentially save someone's life. Yeah. What if one of you goes to space? Or they, and, uh... they, like the viewers could pass it down to their children, and then their children know the knowledge, and then one day <laughs> they pass it down to their children, and then years and years and years, tens of years, decades, centuries in the future, the knowledge has been passed down, and eventually, in the space colony, someone has a heart attack, <laughs> and a life is saved. And, and suddenly... historians look back on this podcast with with joy. Wow. So I'll, I'll tell you the methods. We've got the evitz russomano method. Um, in this one, you wrap one leg over the patient's shoulder, okay? And another around the torso, and then you lock your ankles. Yeah? Right. Yeah, great. That's good. And then you do that. Yeah. And then it's, and wow. then it's really, and then it's really obvious. It's really easy. You just, um, that puts the, that puts their body kind of in front of your body. And then you can yeah. just do chest compressions without, uh, sort of strapping them down. Because oh, if someone's having a heart attack. onto a tree. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If, so, if someone's having a heart attack, a heart attack, you don't want to be having to be wasting be strapping time them down. like strapping them in. Yeah, exactly. Now that's really great because it's speedy um, and it's really, really good for mouth to mouth. So you can you can get right in there and give them a little, uh, you know, little, life kiss if you want the kiss of life. Exactly. Yeah. But the issue is, I don't know if you can you can guess this one. If you're if you're like you know wrapped around them and you're in microgravity, mm. what is what is something that could go wrong? You're gonna be like rolling around. Yeah, oh. you, yeah. You are floating, so you're gonna bump into stuff. You like, bump, bump your head is, <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, that is gonna happen. So it there's could die from a concussion. Well, yeah. You know, <laughs> look, I saved him from the heart attack, but he broke his arm and got a concussion. So I, I did my best. Eh, you know, I think it's a, I think it's a win. <laughs> uh, so there's also the reverse bear hug. It, it's which is incredibly obvious. You come up from behind. You give him a quick bear hug. Um, I say quick. Uh, and then, burr, duh, duh, yeah. Duh. So you, you flex and extend your arm. So you go, boom, boom, boom. <gasps> basically just hit him in the chest. Um, like Tarzan. Yeah, which is, which is really good because again, quick, um, quite stable. You've got your legs. You can, you know, hang on to stuff with your yeah. legs. Uh, but you can't get in from mouth to mouth, which is no. a little bit, you know, is which you don't necessarily need mouth to mouth, but you know, that is one downside to it. And the third one uh, is by far the, the silliest and <laughs> coolest one. It's called the handstand. Oh. So you get your patient, you place them against a solid surface, which bear in mind in microgravity is much easier than you'd think. You just got to kind of, you just got to have the force to be able to <laughs> move, <laughs> to move. You do it like with putting a, a tea towel on the rack. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, bear in mind because in in microgravity there is no there is no up or down. That is all relative to where you uh, are. Yeah. No, I don't so want to think about that. Yeah, so you can put them on any surface, and that's what that's what I love about microgravity that you can have you can have um, compartments and things everywhere no walls on everything. Yeah, because mm. it's, everything is a wall. So you put them <laughs> you put them on a solid surface, okay, mm -hmm. and then um, you. <laughs> <laughs> you then place your feet on the opposite wall. So they're on this surface. You place yeah. your feet on this oh, wall. Wow. And then you, and then, yeah, then you do a handstand and you put your, your hands like straight above your head. You stand up like this. <laughs> and then you kind of, you kind of push and like do this. And you kind of, can you use your whole body to, uh, to give them uh, chest compressions. Now this in space is the most <laughs> effective method for chest compressions, supposedly. Obviously we've not tested this in real microgravity, but that is that is what the that is what they've determined, <laughs> and we could actually. Uh, <laughs> what's the issue with this, right? Obviously, obviously, with this one is if your room is too wide, you're not getting that <laughs> yeah, one done. 
<laughs> so you have like... to bounce off and then aim and hit them. And then <laughs> yeah, you got to be back. you got to be speedy as well. <laughs> you got to bounce yourself back. But no, so obviously, if you're short, I would recommend not trying this one because no. chances are it's not going to happen. And can we, and also, if you're too tall, I would avoid it. You know, because if you're too tall, you might just squish them. Yeah, you're just going to go right through them like Pierce, a vice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those are the three methods um, for saving someone from a heart attack while they're in space. Um, but we could also start using devices, potentially, that do this themselves. So a sort of automatic CPR machine that you just chuck up in there with them. So if anyone's having a heart attack, you're like, oh, hold on, let me get the heart attack hug <laughs> shirt. And you just you just pop it on them and it starts punching them in the chest until their heart starts beating again. Because bear in mind, that's what CPR is. It's just it's just punching someone's heart until it starts working again. It's the equivalent of Fonzie, like, you know, whacking the jukebox. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so we could solve this problem with technology. So these uh, sort of methods of CPR may may become kind of obsolete in space. But bear in mind, they are still really important to learn because the technology could fail. And also it could not be available or difficult to get on and off. It's always useful to have the knowledge of space CPR, just as it's useful to have the knowledge of Earth CPR. So you should learn that too. But that is the story of how to do... CPR in space. Oh, now I'm fully informed. I'm yes. trained. So whenever... Do I get a certificate? Yeah. Well, maybe. I have, have, to to speak to I have to do the practical. Yeah. I have to go to space and try it. <laughs> and then I, get a, a then I get a certificate. Or just, on a plane, yeah. yeah just, just for 20 seconds. To, get someone to hijack a plane, okay? Right? While yeah. you're on the plane. And someone will probably have a heart attack from the shock. And then you can save them <laughs> with your microgravity chest compressions. Oh, that's a good point. This this technique also works in free fall in planes. It does, Just yeah. in case that ever happens. So whenever, if your there plane you is in free fall... And someone's like, oh no, I'm so scared. I am having a heart attack. You can say, don't you worry. Obviously, <laughs> you'd be floating. So you'd be like, don't you worry. I got I will, this. I will get you. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod. Find out when we're doing more live shows.